good morning beautiful people of the world good morning it is monday Woo. it is monday monday october 28 2024 oh my goodness well i didn't get out on time today um <laughs> i didn't get get out of the house on time it's 6 11 i should have been gone at 6 but it is what it is. Hopefully I'll get a parking space. Hopefully. Or I'll be parking somewhere else. Sure. Any here. Any here. How are you guys this morning? Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good day. If it's the next day. Hope you guys had a great weekend this past weekend. Um, my weekend was okay. Um, of course, I told you guys what happened with Christopher and I on Saturday. And um, I told you that yesterday. So, of course, we did talk. And I gave him some real truths. I told him some things that were going to be changing. And I told him that... He can never ever do what he did to me on Saturday because it ain't gonna go good for him. And one of the reasons why I did pull back was because I was not trying to cause a scene. I was not trying to have people all in our business. And for I wasn't trying to, you know, get him caught up or get him hurt, you know, for acting a damn fool. And so I told him, I said, you know, anytime I feel as if I'm afraid of you, you got to go. You got to go. I don't care where you go. And I don't know, I don't care who, how you get there, but you got to leave out of here. I said, because there's no way that I'm going to live in my house where I pay all of the bills. And be afraid of you. That's not happening. That's not happening. I said, that's why your sperm donor and I are not together. Because I got to the point that I was afraid of him when he told me he would kill me. I said, he had to fucking go. He had to go. That was my part. He didn't put a he didn't pay no rent. I paid the rent. My name was on that lease. He had to go. And so, I made that clear to him. I said, you are a child, you not my man, and this is just how I said it to him. I said, we not fucking. We mama and son. And I am the mama. And anytime you feel like you don't like what your mama is saying or what your mama is doing, then you need to get the fuck on. You need to be a grown ass man and you need to get the fuck on and I meant that shit so of course he was crying not boohoo crying but he had tears rolling down his face he apologized he said I love you from the bottom of my heart I know I was wrong I was disrespectful I, I don't you know I don't I, I just he, didn't, he really didn't have a reason for why he did what he did he was angry. He said that I was comparing him to a little girl and said, and I was acting like, I said, that's not what I was saying. I said, but it had you stood there, had you listened, had you come back when I said, come here, instead of you just walking away. And I said, and that's another thing I had a problem with too. I said, when I tell you to come here, well, I told you to come, I said, you don't keep walking. You, well, you don't keep walking. I said, that's what lovers do. That's what people do in relationships when they have relationships. They walk away and 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 I said, when you grown and you you doing your own thing, I said that's different. I said, but I don't care if you 45 and I'm 95, and I'm telling you something that that you need to know or need to be corrected on. You come here. You don't keep walking. I said, and then we in the I said we in the store tussling like. 
Like two motherfuckers out on the street in a street fight? Are you crazy? I told him. I said, you know, I said, you, you, you want this, you want that, you want that. I said, and somebody, I just read somebody's comment. Uh-uh. I don't know who it was to say, you know, you better get a handle on Christopher because, you know, of the sense of entitlement. And I agree. I agree 100%. But let me just say this. I have a handle on Christopher. Oh, I have a handle on Christopher. See, you can't wait till they 16 to try to raise their asses. You got to do that shit when they two. You got to knock them in their motherfucking head when they two. And please, y'all, don't. I'm not talking about child abuse. But I'm talking about disciplining them. You understand what I'm saying? When I say knock them in their head when they two, you got to grab their ass up when they two. You got to get in their faces when they two. When they hitting you and doing all this shit and say, listen here. Your kids need to know that you mean motherfucking business. Period. You know, you are a child. And this is what I told him. I said, you are a child. I said, and even if you do get a job or a summer job, this is still my shit. I run this motherfucker. Me. And I told him, I said, now, one or two things, one or two things could have occurred. You know, I said, you want all of this shit. I said, but when we was living over in the apartment, I had more money. So I was able to do a little bit, you know, more. I was able to do more. I said, but you and I were living in an apartment where we had a slum landlord who had become a slam landlord. And, and I'll tell you all about that, about what I've discovered, what they're doing now. But I said, I said, You and I both, we were tired of living in that apartment. We were tired of climbing them three flights of steps. We were tired of, you know, the conditions of the apartment. We had one bathroom. I said, now we got three bathrooms. We got three full bathrooms with showers. I said, any, meeny, miny, mo, you can pick whatever bathroom you want, you want to go into. I said, I gave you the bathroom downstairs in the basement. I said, I told you that this was your bathroom. You wanted that bathroom. Y'all, I have never taken a shower in that bathroom. And I will be in this house in April coming up to a year. I have never taken a shower in that bathroom. I have never taken a shower in the guest bathroom. And the only reason why I take a shower. And that also has a, um, a hot tub. I said... I left that bathroom down there for you. I fixed it up. I pretty fired it and all, everything. I said, and I told you to keep that bathroom clean. I said, you don't even keep the bathroom clean. I went down there last week and the bathroom stunk. I don't know what it was. I'm looking all around. It wasn't no, no shit or nothing on the toilet or nothing like that. It just stunk. And I made him go down there and clean it up. The, the mirror where he brushes teeth in the mirror, the toothpaste on the mirror. Uh, he had some kind of body lotion was on the um on the cream or whatever. The bathroom mat on the floor. He don't straighten that out. He didn't he didn't the shower. You know the shower is a sauna and a shower with all the different things or whatever. I said I told you to keep this bathroom clean. I said you don't even keep the bathroom clean. And I said I told you if I have to come down there one more time. And that bathroom is not clean. It's going to be a problem. I said, you will be washing out of a, out of a sink. Because I'm not going to keep telling you the same thing over and over again. You know what I'm saying? So, my point is, is that, you know, you want to beg me for shit. But then you, wanna, you don't want to do what it is that I tell you to do. And that's, that just ain't going to fly with me. You know, and I said, I said, I said, and another thing about you too, I said, you, um, you get up in my face and you want to ask me, you want to, you want to get up in my face and say, well, mama, you know, um, um, can I have this? I can I, I said, well, the same energy that you have 
for getting in my face, begging me for stuff. I said, why you don't have that same energy when it comes to your goddamn grades? Making sure them teachers turn in your grades so that your, your, so that your GPA is where it's supposed to be. I said, why you don't do that? Why you ain't up in their faces like you up in mine? Well, I said, why you don't bug the fuck out of them about your grades? You know? So I just I just told him some, some truths about himself. He gonna tell me that he feel as though I'm abusive towards him. I said, no, I'm not abusive towards you. I said, but I said, I will tell you this. I said, you have abusive t tendencies, what you did Saturday. And I said... If you feel that, and then he said that he'd feel like I don't care about him. I just ignored all of that bullshit because, you know, I said, and so I gave him some examples of not caring about him. So when I got done, he just standing there looking stupid. I said, I'm the one that's on the damn phone constantly um, talking to your teachers, talking to your um what is he? His uh, I can't think of what the man, the uh, his social worker, because you know he has an IEP for a learning disability. And I said, he said, well, you know, I just been going through a lot. I said, he said, I just I feel stressed. I said, so does every. I said, I I said I am too. I said, and I'm not uh, de de uh, demeaning or demising your stress. I'm sure you are stressed. We all are. I said, guess what? The whole world is stressed out. I said, but that doesn't give you a right to do what you did. And I told him, I said, we, I ain't having that. I ain't having you disrespect me. You can't disrespect me. I said, I do too much for you. And I said, um, Anytime you don't want to be around me, Christopher, you get you can hit the bricks. I said, and I'm not coming to look for you either. Because I'm not going to live in fear. I'm not going to live in disrespect. I'm not going to live in no circumstances that make me uncomfortable. And I'm paying these motherfucking bills. And I meant that. And I mean that. You know, so... Um, you know, we just had a, a it went, this went on for a while, you know, we wasn't argue, uh, arguing or nothing like that, but I was telling him about himself and I was telling him what's not allowed. So I did tell him that he cannot get his hair cut every two weeks anymore. He has to wait once a month to get his hair cut. I said, I cannot keep affording to spend 200, I mean, $40 every two weeks to get your hair cut. I said, it's too much money. And if you keep your hair low like you have it, you can go once a month. I said, now, if you going on a trip, you going somewhere with the Teen Boys Club, um, if Dr. Glass is um, going to take you all on a trip or he going to do something with you all, I said, then you can get your hair cut. I said, but you don't need to get your hair every cut every two weeks. You don't have a job. And your hair don't grow that fast can wait well of course i got him because that is one thing that he loves to do and that's getting his hair cut every two weeks because he loves his hair like i love mine so he's like oh but i'm sorry i'm sorry i said i accept your apology but what i what i there's no negotiating accept it this is what it is and I said, as far as getting you all of those things that you put in that Amazon cart, I said, they've been deleted. He said, you took them out of the cart? Yes. Yes. I'm not buying any of that. And he said, well, what is it that I have to do? To, to be able to go back to get my hair every, cut every two weeks. I said, nothing. That's just the way that it is. He said, well, I don't punch you. I said, no. I said, but some things will change, are going to change. And that's one of them. That's one of them. And I told him, I said, you're not focused. And I said, and I know you got to learn this, 
disability. I said, but you also got a laziness disability too. You lazy as a fuck. I said, because all of it is not on your learning disability. It's a lot of it on you where you're not motivated, you're not focused. And I said, and when, when I told him, I told him something, that's when I use his teachers as examples. His teachers don't turn in his grades, which then lowers his GPA. He do the work, he gives the work, they don't turn the grade in. I don't know what's going on with that, but when I go up there and talk to uh, pick up his report card. I'm gonna find out about that too because that to me is just dumb and don't make sense I talked to his social worker on Friday and he was saying the same thing that Chris says. So I know Chris is not lying. He was like They have a certain time period to get grades in. I said well, they need to get it in you know, so I'm gonna talk to his teachers. I'm gonna go talk to them and I'm gonna say listen You know this 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 is this is um this is what needs to be done because why are you all taking forever to turn in grades Does grades go in on thursday at such a time you know what what's the problem so <clears throat> he has to do he has and i told him i said you have some i, I, I talked to the social work he went in and looked and saw that he had some assignments missing in ISL, it's some, I don't understand, it's some thing that they do. And he told me, he was supposed to do them over the weekend. I said, did you do them? He said, yeah, I did uh, some of the assignments. It's something, something, he said he couldn't do some of them because of something, something. I said, okay, well, whatever. I said, this is your, I said, grades are next week. Report card pickup is next week. I said, so you need to get whatever needs to be done you need to get that in, you know, so, you know, again, Somebody, 
I said, and you in Orland in a predominantly white upscale neighborhood and you a black boy? I said, they would have drug your ass up out of there. I said, it was about to get ugly. I said, never, ever, ever have I been more embarrassed and more hurt. I said, and I, I said, I have told you over and over and over again. And I'm just keeping it 100 with you all. This ain't on no racist shit. This is real shit. Black boys in America, they're afraid of them. They're afraid of black men. We, we black people, period. It is considered a threat to society, especially black boys, um, young black boys, his age, you know, because, you know, <clears throat> it's what it is. And I keep telling him that. I said, and you did exactly what I was talking about. So I said, I said, that would, I said, this shit was getting ready to go motherfucking left. I said, and God forbid if I had been your mother and I was white. And this is just the truth, you all. It's just the world we live in. Racism, uh, uh, stereotyping, all of that still exists when it comes to black people. I've been black all my life. <laughs> So, you know, it never ends. It never ends. You know, and I, I've experienced uh, racism all my life. I've been called a nigga, a nigga, all my life from bad white people. Fat nigga, bitch, this, that, and the other, I, all of that. I know how white people look at me. I know how white people view me. I know how white people view black boys and black men as a threat. As a threat. And I keep telling him this over and over and over and over again. I said, yeah, you don't really look like maybe what, you know, the, this is one of the reasons why I, this, let me go back because I'm skipping all around. I said, no, you may not look like you are, you fit the profile of somebody who is not a good kid, but they don't see that. All they see is that you are black and that's all this white lady saw was that this was a black boy that she felt that was assaulting a woman. That's what she saw. She was very nice. I could tell that she felt bad for assuming that it was something more than it was. But that's not, it wasn't her fault. It was Chris' fault. It was Chris' fault. You know, and it was my fault. It was my fault. Because I shouldn't have never grabbed him. And when I think about it now, or have thought about it over the weekend, I felt like I shouldn't have grabbed him. But I grabbed him and, and not making, you know, no excuses for it or whatever. But I grabbed him because I was pissed. Because I cannot remember what he said. But I was pissed. I was pissed and all I saw was red. You know? And <clears throat> the white lady was trying, just trying to give me some help. Cause she thought, she thought I was being attacked. She thought I was being attacked. <laughs> Real talk. Somebody in here wrong. Okay, I'm 
know somebody was in here crooked. Him or it's him, but it's him. Love these clothes in here. I'll be there. I left my makeup bag at home. Mm -hmm. Oh well, I'm glad I put the makeup on that I had on. Y'all won't believe I left my whole makeup bag at home. How did I walk out the door without my makeup bag? Let's see, I was rushing. I don't have no mascara on. I do got some eyeliner on. Glad I put that on. <sighs> but yeah. It was bad. So again, you know, he apologized. He said he was sorry. Um, you know. And, um, you know. And that was that. But oh, excuse me, so sleepy. So that's how that went. But you know, like I told him, you know, um, ain't taking no ass whoopings from nobody and damn for sure I ain't taking one from my kid I'm not doing that that I'm not gonna do you know and a lot of you know I like like I said on the video yesterday I know you all have gone through you all have experienced what I'm talking about I know you have because you know it's not too many people that um you know they haven't gone through what I've gone through, you know, um, you know, we've all gone through it, you know, but his mouth, and I told him this, I said, this is what I told him. I said, your community, your community loves you. Your community, the people that you have, you have your have this, you have this support from. I said these people, I said they love you and they support you. I said, but when you step outside of this community of people, they don't give a fuck about you. I said, in your mouth and your toughness and thinking you're bad, I said it's gonna get your ass whooped. This is gonna get your ass whooped. I said, no, they ain't gonna kill you, but they're gonna say, oh, okay, come on, little motherfucker, what you got? I said, you're not as bad and as tough as you think you are. I said, you damn for sure ain't bad enough and as, as tough as you think you are when it come to me. My brother-in-law, I was telling my sister about it. My brother-in-law, yesterday on the phone, my brother-in-law said, you should have drove off and left his ass. I said, you're right. You're right. I said, no, the reason why I didn't drive off and I didn't leave his ass. I said, because I was in grandma car, my mama car, and I was with my mama. Because if it had just been me and him, pew, I would have been gone. You want to talk shit? You want to be, and I'm telling you, let's go. And I'm trying to, you know, I'm holding him, telling him, let's go. Get out this store. 
And I was doing that because I wasn't trying to act a fool in the store. But anyway, um, you know, I have many times I have put my foot down when it, I, all the time I put my foot down when it comes to Christopher. You know, and like I got told him, I say, you think that you can punk me because there ain't no man here. And you think, oh, you know. He said, no, I don't think that. I don't think that. He said, I was wrong. I was so wrong. I was wrong. And, and I'm sorry. I am so sorry. I didn't mean for it to go that far. And But I was mad and I was angry. And you, I felt like you was comparing me to a little girl saying I was having a tantrum. I said, if you had stood there long enough. Instead of getting in your feelings, I said, and that's the problem with you. I said, you take everything literally and you take everything personal. And instead of you listening and stop walking away with an attitude, I said, you would have understood exactly what I was saying. So, you know, it is what it is. And then um, jumping off of him. I'm getting real tired and real, real frustrated with my beautician. So this ponytail, it was on here too tight. And I ended up taking it off. And I wrapped it back around myself. And it's on here by, if the wind blow real, real hard, it's going to be a goner, right? So I was supposed to go to her uh, Friday and have her pin it back on. Now, this is partially her fault because I told y'all she was drunk and she made it too tight. So, I was supposed to go Friday. She says, well, I call her and she tells me that she don't have nobody until, I don't know what time it was. I got off at 2.30 on Friday because I was working at the other place. Instead of her just coming on and doing it at when I got off work at 2.30, 3 o'clock, she said, I don't have nobody till 4. She literally lives up the street from the shop. She lives around the corner from me. Okay, I could have went to her house and she could have pinned it back on. So I'm like... So you can't come now? You not at the shop now? She was like, no, I'm not at the shop now. She said, you want to come in the morning? So she said, come at 1030 in the morning because I got to do um, this this young lady who I, I, I went to kindergarten with. That's how long I've known her. She said, I got to do her, uh, her hair at 11. I said, okay. I called her at 9.30 Saturday morning. She said, oh, girl, I'm still in the bed. I said, okay. She said, um, you want to come at 4 o'clock um, this afternoon? I said, okay. I'll call you around 3 so or three or so. So we left from Orland like about 3, 3.30. So when I got to, when we got home, it was a little bit after 4. Close to 4. Because it didn't take that long with no traffic. So I called her. Girl, I, I don't know what I ate. I've been on the toilet all morning. Oh my god. I, I my I said, so you didn't do uh Zanzi's hair? No, she gonna come Wednesday. So she canceled her, then she canceled me. When I tell you I am so sick and tired of her not being reliable. This is one of the reasons why she has no clients anymore. She has me and she has a few others 
but nothing she doesn't do hair on a consistent basis you know she's not she's not making she's not making hardly no money if it wasn't for me and a few of the rest of us she would have nothing I don't even know how she's paying the booth rent. I don't know how she's paying her booth rent. Because she, she don't have no clients. I don't get it. I don't. I don't get it. I do not get it. And, you know, I'm going to say this to you all. As badly as I don't want to come to work, I never want to come here. But I know if I don't get my black fat ass up and come here, I'm going to lose every goddamn thing that I have. I'm not going to be able to eat. I'm not going to be able to go get my hair done. I'm not going to be able to buy no makeup. I'm not going to be able to move. I'm not going to be able, when I say move, I mean I'm not going to not move from my house, but I'm not going to be able to be able to move the way I want to move if I don't have no fucking money. I just don't understand it. I, I, I don't. I don't understand it. So then she asked me, did I want to come today and for her to pin it up? So I'm going to call her today. I'm saying, are you coming today? Because on Mondays, she cleans the shop. Because I think that's how she paying the booth rent. get it. I just don't get it. I just do not get it. I don't get it. So, anyway, um, I, I, I'm, so I, I'm really, really, I gotta figure out something to do for the winter for my hair, and I really want to get braids. But I'm scared to get braids because of this pinched nerve in my neck. And I really need to talk to, um, I really, because I'm going to tell y'all, I'm tired. I'm getting tired of going to her. I love her to death, but um, the inconsistency with her is just, it's getting on my nerve, you know? It's really getting on my nerve. And she was like, um saying that she wanted to give me a, a roll a roller set so I can wear my hair down. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Because, see, when it's time to go get it redone, I can't be stuck out there like that. I just can't. And I really need to make a decision. I need to figure out what I'm going to do with this. I got to figure out what I'm going to do. And, um, like I said, I really want to get braids, you know. So... Because she just, she just, she's just not reliable. You know, I pay her a hundred dollars uh, once a month. I go get my hair done once a month. I pay her a hundred dollars. She colors it, or she'll give me a edge up, you know, whatever. But it, it, it's just, it's just getting to be too much. It's just getting to be too much. I got to figure out what, what I'm going to do with my hair. Um, I got to figure it out. Because she just... And this is why a lot of people have left her. Because of her not being reliable. You know, a lot of people got locks. They got braids, you know different stuff like that, you know. So I think, um, I'm thinking about getting my hair braided, um, 
probably going to get my hair braided um, at the end of November. That's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to get my hair braided. I wanted to get my hair braided before Thanksgiving. But I don't know if I'm going to have the money before Thanksgiving. I might. Because the braids is going to cost me like $200. So, I'm thinking about going on and getting it done. Um, you know, a uh, week after next. So, next, this coming Saturday, Christopher and I are going to get a flu shot. And then I was going to try to get my COVID shot the following week. Um, so I haven't heard back from them if they gonna let me do that or not, but I, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm real tired of her. I really am. She just, she just, she's just getting worse and worse. She's getting worse and worse. So anyway, you guys, I'm gonna let you all go. I will be back on here tomorrow. Tuesday to chop it up with you all to see how y'all doing and we shall chat then okay all right have a great great day and I'll see you on here tomorrow okay bye